I'll, I'll throw the first one at Dwayne. Besides, how are you? Uh, how did you connect with Scott, the producer? I connected with Scott um, long before this flick ever took place. I've known Scott since, uh, we've known each other since, what, 94, 95, something like that. I've known him a long time. And, uh, you know, he was a stand-up. That's how we met. He was doing stand-up. And then he moved to L.A., did stand-up, and then moved into writing and producing and directing. So, yeah, I've known him a long time. Um, and then at some point, I was telling people it was for this project, but I don't think so. It was I had put he and Michael together for some other thing that Michael was working on, right? Yeah. Scottish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. script. Yeah, yeah, it was a script. So, yeah, so that's how Scott came to be involved with us, with Michael, with the production. You know, um, Michael, Michael shot a lot of footage. I think he started yeah. like in 16. Yeah, I mean, this, I mean, the whole project was initiated through him, Michael Alexander. So, and then he brought me on and then he he got a lot of footage. Like I said, it was, a, but it was just like an aggregation of footage. It wasn't really, you know, a story or didn't really have an arc. And so then Scott came on board and we, uh, last year we went and just drove around the city, shot B-roll, did some additional interviews. And then Scott put it in a whole, you know, gave it a gave it a structure right it was, it was editing skills and storytelling prowess <laughs> yeah well scott i've heard a bunch of buzzwords so i've come up with a theory right now on you okay we know that writer producer was a stand-up moved to la were you one of those development deal people in the friends seinfeld boom uh, no, no, I actually think I, I missed out on that. I I wish I was, uh, but no, I, uh, I ended up, uh, writing more feature scripts and my whole, like that whole time period for me was, oh, this is really close. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And then it doesn't happen. And you get a huge star attached to something. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Then it doesn't happen. And then, uh, after a certain period of time, uh, I ended up stumbling into documentary filmmaking, which sure. caused me to stumble into editing, which caused me to uh, do more of this stuff. And so I've kind of been lucky enough to be able to do things from the very beginning to the very end. Like you can start with a concept and then end with uh editing it all together. This, as Dwayne was saying, this project, uh, I was brought in a little bit later, uh, but um, but yeah, it, it, what was wonderful about this project, one, what Dwayne was talking about, going just to Chicago, touring the north side, the south side, getting to right. see parts of the city that I, I grew up on the north side, and, and I got to see parts of the south side that were like a whole different world to me. And it was wonderful to see it. And it, it added so much to what the story that we ended up telling. Right. Dwayne, big fan of your stand up, And of course, your credits have Seinfeld and Martin and How High, so many TV and film projects that I've enjoyed over the years. You uh, Did you write for Arsenio or you produced on Arsenio? I wrote for Arsenio, yeah. Yes, I mean, important part of my childhood, Arsenio, because it got all the great bands before any other talk show did. Like that's oh, the I'm one sorry. I had. I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. I wrote for the second iteration of Arsenio. Oh, okay. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. produced one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. that one was cool too. You had the Billy <laughs> Cyrus with Fred Durst collaboration on that. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, yeah. This is probably a little bit after, after this was after your childhood when you were an, an older scarred uh, man. Yes. Yeah, and then he was on the second iteration of Seinfeld starring uh, Joe Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> In yeah. this day and age of reboots, you never know. I, oh, I wouldn't be shocked if I missed a Seinfeld reboot. Be oh, man. Or, or like Phil expected. Rosenthal went to Russia to make another Seinfeld <laughs> or something like that. You yeah. Never, that could but, be a spectacular disaster. <laughs> I'd watch it. <laughs> but Yeah, I think everybody would watch it once. <laughs> but uh, where I was going before the, all those compliments, Dwayne, 
How much of the Chicago comedy history did you know before you started making the film versus seeing the film and researching and learning from that? That's a good question. Um, I learned a lot. I mean, I learned about all the things that Tom Dreesen was talking about and the, you know, and the open mics used to run and how Marshall, you know, first got started. So I, I learned a lot of things. And, you know, from those days to this, because even now, because the scene has grown so much and it's so diverse that you're still learning from people who are doing it now, you know, and the venues that they do it and the and the, and the perspectives that they bring to it. Um, so I learned a lot. Yeah, I learned a lot. Got it. I My comedy knowledge of Chicago, I think with most people, you kind of learn that SNL pulled a lot of people from Second City. But then mm -hmm. over time, you go, hey, Richard Kind, he was there. And you don't necessarily associate him with that. Yet it's all these different backgrounds. You said Tom Dreesen. I know he yeah. was in one of the first integrated comedy teams ever. Yeah, with Tim Reed, Tim and Tom. Exactly, yeah. Tim and yeah. Tom. So... Yeah. Is there so much more, and Scott might have an answer for this that's different from yours, is there a lot of cutting room floor stuff for, for putting together this film? Because obviously in doing 50 to 60 years of comedy, fitting into 90 minutes, it's kind of a lot to do there. Yeah, there's uh, a ton of things uh, uh, that that didn't make it into the movie. There are a ton of people that didn't make it into the movie. Uh there, like, truth be told, uh, when I started looking at how I could construct it into something, mm -hmm. I really looked at some of the more, uh, the bigger names like Dion Cole and, uh, and Jeff Garland and some of those people that I thought would, would make people want to see the story more, like could be an entree into seeing what it was. And so there are, uh, Probably there might be 30, 40 comics that were interviewed that didn't make it into the thing. Uh, like as Dwayne was saying, Michael Alexander uh, for about seven, eight years was just interviewing every comic from Chicago that he uh, he liked or, or thought would be a valuable addition to the story. And so there was a ton of footage. Uh, so so uh, there's, I don't know if there's enough to find other stories in it, um, but uh, but yeah, lots of stuff uh, did not make it into the cut. Lots of things that were a little bit hard to edit out, uh, but um, we were trying to find as much of a, a focus as we could with the footage that we had, because it was so disparate that we just right. wanted to try and find some uh something to hold on to and it's funny that you were talking about the Tom Dreesen with the first integrated uh comedy team he actually says a line that uh like him he and uh Tim Reed were the first black and white comedy team and history shows we were the last and <laughs> and and I just loved that as almost the backbone for the whole thing is why did that combination ever to ever take hold again it never did and and so that's what a whole bunch of the story is is about this separation in these two sides of the comedy world well Dwayne, you're not on the cutting room floor you made it so does that <laughs> give you bragging rights over those 30 to 40 comics that you're still in the movie no not really uh no i don't uh I've actually run into some cats who didn't make the cut. And I just said, hey, man, it's just that the way that the story worked out and, you know, and just, yeah. yeah, you know, or hey, woman, or hey, whoever it is that, you know, maybe if we uh, do a, a part two or a part three or something, you know, yeah, I'm trying to stay on everybody's good side. <laughs> <laughs> but it is an interesting thing that, as we talked about, such a rich history of Chicago's comedy scene. Yet in the six, seven years, whatever it is that you were making the film, unfortunately, we lost Judy Tenuta. We've mm -hmm. seen Hannibal Burst become a legit headlining, huge comic. So some of the stories that you started with evolved before the film was wrapped. Yeah, yeah. They evolved because you're right, because the people evolved and just things that happened to people in their lives and, and, and in, in ways 
made made what we got even more poignant, more relevant, you know, and 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 now a doc like with Judy, because you know, she's gone. So that's I don't know if it's her last video documented thing, but you know, it's one of the few I would imagine. So, right. Yeah. So putting a bow on all this excellence that we're talking about and the fact that out of the loop is great and highly recommended by yours truly, same closing question at both of you. Scott, IMDB says your next project is producing crazy hot. Is that true? Or what should we be looking for next? Okay, that actually came out a while ago. Um, and it was a very similar situation as this, which was uh, somebody uh, had a bunch of footage about something and didn't quite find a way to put it together. And I, I helped with that. And it was a fun uh, documentary about super hot chili peppers in the culture around that it was i never thought i'd do anything about that but it was kind of fun to discover that so that has that came out uh it, i think it's still available on uh amazon and places like that um okay. uh but uh as far as my next thing oddly enough i'm going uh next week to uh Germany to work on a, a TV movie out there, even though I don't speak German. I for some reason have stumbled into this little market of uh of writing for German television. And then I want to make another independent film. And I've been talking to some people, some of the people who were involved in this, uh, about uh finding another story to tell. So we'll uh I'm Working on that, answering that question right now. Hasselhoff, is he in any of the German <laughs> stuff you're working on? <laughs> I wish he was. <laughs> that would be a great first attachment. <laughs> to build something around him, that would be pretty fantastic. If it's not him, the Scorpions or you know, <laughs> the Music Factory, whatever it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. forward to that. And Dwayne, as we alluded to earlier, excellent credits. Also dig the stuff that he did with Kamal Bell. And people in your position that are these writers and producers on shows, it's usually secret what they're working on. They're attached to six things and we're not allowed to know about it. Is there anything I'm allowed to know about that you're working on right now? Man, if I had something uh, that I could tell you about, I'd tell you. Right now, I'm doing stand-up. That's what I'm doing mostly now. So I'm just, I'm performing around. I'll be at Zany's May 17th doing a show. Um, um, there's a thing that I'm, I may be doing with Kamau in the future, but it's in development. So, you know, I'm telling you all that I know. Yeah. And, and we anything see, that I do in the future, uh, he'll be involved in, in some way, shape or form. Well, what I, where I was going to go with all that is what are the odds that we see Scott on stage with you on tour in the near future? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he might be on stage telling me to, um, I don't know. We, we actually are planning a, to do a project later this fall. So you might, you might see him around, see him doing something. A lot of times when you do press days, you quickly get the vibe of, Oh, these people haven't spoken in nine months. They're not working together again. They shot this <laughs> thing three years ago. <laughs> so it's refreshing yeah. to see that. The next press day, I might get you two again. So thank you for your time. Congratulations on getting this one out. Dwayne, hope to see you live in New York in the near future. And Scott, congrats on the Hasselhoff series. Yeah, thank you. That's It's my pride and joy. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. Thanks, man. Outro.